Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and avoid 90 month auto loans <laughs> or $1,000 a month auto loans. So today's video is going to be about how American car debt is exploding higher. Uh, we're gonna be talking about skyrocketing auto rates, repos, and potentially even remote shut off tech. Um, we'll see. We'll see if we're going to get into that one. But uh, for the most part, this video is going to be like all my other videos uh, that are in the PowerPoint presentation. Tons of value. Uh, if you don't like these kinds of videos, well, I don't really care because I do. And I think it's a great way to um, convey a ton of information in a very concise amount of time. So trouble is brewing. Okay. So right now, consumers have about $1.4 trillion worth of auto debt. This amounts to be 9 to 10% of total consumer debt. Uh, so you can see here from the New York Federal Reserve Bank, this chart right here is talking about how consumers have added almost $1 trillion in aggregate credit card and car loan debt over the past decade. So this is from 2003 up until, um, I want to say 2023 or late 2022. But you can see here the black line is basically automotive loans. So in about 2011 or so, this just started exploding even past credit card debt. Uh, so you can see the number of people that are 60 days behind on car loans is about 25% year over year growing. Uh, and then people that are owing more on what their cars are worth, this is called being underwater, um, which I'll show you right here. So um, I want to quote this article very quickly. This says that uh, the buildup in negative equity being underwater, which I just talked about, or the amount that debt exceeds a vehicle's value is rattling consumers and raising alarms within the industry. Though it's not unusual for drivers to carry negative equity, some dealers say more people are arriving at their lots up to $10,000 underwater. Uh, so you can see here that new car payments are at eye-popping levels. Uh, leave a comment down below if you guys are seeing this. How many people do you know personally that have four-figure car payments now? This is $1,000 and up because it's reaching 16% of new car payments. So if you look at the share of new car payments over $1,000, if you look at 2010 all the way to 2022, quarter one, this is below 5%. And then from then on, it's just uh, hockey sticked. We're at 16% right now. If you look at the average new car monthly payment uh, from quarter one, 2010 up to quarter one, 2022, uh, it's increasing from about $460, $470 uh, to almost $700, $800 right here actually past 700, excuse me. So if you look at subprime borrowers, um, this goes without saying, but they are the highest risk of default and repossessions. And if you look at this chart right here, which um, I took from the car dealership guy, uh, and also shout out to my research analyst who helped me put this together. Look at this right here. I used to sell cars, you guys. I've never seen a 90 month term. Uh, the longest I would see is probably like 60, maybe 72, you know, right around there. 90 months is insane, you guys. Who's who's taking these on? This is almost becoming like a mini mortgage, if you will. Um, so sorry for the big block of text right here, uh, but basically uh, we're looking at high levels of automotive debt and negative equity. What this is doing is it's making harder for borrowers to keep up with payments. About 29% of all auto loans originated in 2020 to 2022 are subprime or near prime. And then also uh, we can see a rise in repos and a decline in consumer spending, which could have ripple effects into the other parts of the economy. If you remember my video from the summer, I actually called a repo guy uh, and he said his repos are going off the charts. Uh, that video has about 800,000 views if you haven't seen that already. Uh, and it's also going to be harder for riskier consumers to take out auto loans that they'll have to pay higher rates on because of the risk, okay? So what 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 is the reason for this? Why are cars costing so much? What are the road roadblocks to affordability? What are we seeing here? So this is all Bank of America Global Research. Uh, if you look at this big chart right here, I know some of these smaller ones are harder to see. I apologize for that. I probably should have made these individual slides. Um, but just to be concise, uh, this first one is the total cost of raw materials per average vehicle. So if you look at the total raw material dollar cost per average vehicle, it's actually decreased in recent months, which we can see right here, but it's still relatively expensive, okay? If you look at this, um, the y-axis is four thousand dollars. I mean, we're still we're just a, we're just below that right here, but you can still see that it's still relatively expensive uh, compared to 1990 uh, and up. Now, if you look at Exhibit 43 up here, uh, you can see inventory levels bottoming in September of 21, which is right around here. 
uh, and they've increased since then by about 735 units, but still they're at almost at historic lows. So it's just a supply and demand equation at this point. Um, the reason a lot of these cars aren't affordable is because dealers know they can throw in additional dealer markup. Look at the Kia Telluride, for example. I was looking at new cars. I was looking at SUVs because I have another kid on the way. Woo! If you're still watching this, uh, shout out to uh, my future daughter, another girl, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, as long as they're happy and healthy, I don't care. I was hoping for a boy, but whatever. Um, so anyway, uh, look at Kia uh, Tellurides. I was looking at SUVs, and I'm like, okay, I'll stop in, check out the Korean stuff. The Kias are actually really nice. The Telluride's nice. My point is, is there's additional dealer markup on these Kias. So if you look at the Kias, there's like, four or five, six grand on top of the sticker price um, just because they don't make enough. There's the demand outpaces the supply, which is going to raise, you know, basic economics is going to raise the price. So take a look at exhibit seven. So these lead times and production materials, uh, this is obviously supply chain um, being backed up because of COVID, but uh, this Y axis here is days. The X axis is the date. So if you look at anywhere from January 15 to January of uh, 21, right here where my little laser pointer is, these lead times are basically anywhere from 60 to 70 days on average. Uh, after January of 21, these lead times are closer to 90 to 100 days. Even though it is dropping down a little bit, uh, we're definitely still way over the norm. So with all that being said, let's give a shout out to today's sponsor, who is Policy Genius. If you have a family, you know how much your loved ones depend on you. In a worst case scenario, you wouldn't want them to worry about money. A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your family will have a safety net to cover mortgage payments, college costs, or other expenses so they can get back on their feet and focus on what matters most. My wife and I personally use Policy Genius to find the right term insurance for ourselves and our family after our daughter was born. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed agents are not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal information is private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash whiteboard finance or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Okay, thank you for sitting through that spot. It allows me to do these videos uh, for free. Uh, check out these roadblocks to affordability continued. So if you look at this Cox Automotive or Moody's Analytics Vehicle Affordability Index, this is for January of 2023, okay? I know this video is coming out in March, but we weren't able to get the February one just yet. Uh, if you look at January of 12, all the way through January of 21, these prices absolutely exploded after January of 21 based on the factors we just talked about. This is why this debt is becoming so high, you guys, because COVID-19, the pandemic led to car shortages, lower interest rates, and stimulus checks, which drove prices higher. The demand, out, again, outpaced the supply because of all the constraints we talked about in the previous slide. Uh, and you can see what it did to affordability. So new car prices have risen 20% since 2020, and used car prices are up 37%. Because of this, people had to take on more debt and longer loan terms, which we just talked about, the 90-month loans. So take a look at this chart right here from Fitch. Uh, this is a rise in auto delinquencies. So the percentage of borrowers at least 60 days late on their car payments is rising. Okay, so if this goes all the way back to 1994, which absolutely actually exploded here uh, in the mid to late 90s. Uh, and then you can see here during the great financial crisis in the mid 2000s, 2006, 2007, 2008, uh, it spiked back up. Uh, and then we've had an, an increase, a huge decline, which was good to see, I guess. And then right here, it, it's, it's exploding back closer to 6%. So with the supportive policies, the pandemic in the past, there are pockets of borrowers who are beginning to show some distress on their debt. This is a quote from the Federal Reserve. Uh, and then also in January, the percentages of delinquent subprime borrowers uh, rose to 5.67%, the highest since 2006, which we can see right here. 
So moving along, along the current state of the auto market, you can see Exhibit 46 from Bank of America Global Research. The U.S. auto loan rate, uh, just 60 months, versus effective Fed funds rate. I talk about this all the time on this channel. Interest rates control everything, you guys. So if you look at uh, the dark blue or the purple, this is the U.S. auto loan rate, 60 months. Uh, the y-axis is bank rate, new 60-month auto rates. You can see 0% all the way to 10%. And then the light blue line is the effective Fed funds rate. This is basically just what commercial banks get their money loaned to them at by the central bank, by the Federal Reserve. And then they make their spread. They make the arbitrage on that. So if you look at uh, peak auto sales in 2000, the average 60-month auto rate was 9%. Okay. Now, if you look at the Fed funds rate, it's almost like a one-to-one -one relationship. So as the Fed raises rates, which they've been doing since basically you know a year now, um, or at least eight months, um, you can see uh, what the U.S. auto loan rate has also done. It's gone up in the same uh, trajectory, if you will. So auto loan rates have spiked as the Federal Reserve raises rates to fight inflation. Uh, GM, uh, General Motors, has temporarily halted production of pickups as inventory bloats. And then Ford files a patent on tech that could shut off your car if you miss your car payments. This is 100% true. Uh, this source right now, I can open it, but it would kind of derail the whole presentation. That's from kbb.com. Okay. And then also, if you take a look at this uh, slide right here, um, and we're going to get into like my thoughts and you know what to do at this point. It's not just a video with a bunch of slides in it. Um, so even though inflation may have peaked, it's still above the Fed's 2% inflation target. So we've seen consecutive months of CPI increasing, which means that I think higher federal funds rates are here to stay. That means higher T-bills, higher savings accounts, um, higher returns for people that are savers sitting in cash. But uh, the cost of borrowing will continue to increase as well, as we saw in that previous slide, as the Fed fights stubbornly high inflation. So banks are also tightening its lending standards at a rapid rate, which we can see right here. Uh, it was pretty lax from basically... Um, well, forever <laughs> until the great financial crisis. Uh, and then we're starting to see, you know, them getting strict again right here. So how can you, you position yourself? What are you going to do? As always, this is not a fear mongering channel. This is to help you uh, highlight things that are going on in the world and then teaching you how you can position yourself. So wait to buy. So if you're in the market for a car, know that interest rates and prices are very volatile right now. That is 100% true. If you can, you know, wait for prices to roll over. Uh, be strategic, so explore multiple financing options before signing. Uh, don't simply go for low monthly payments because it could be a trap. Hey, your payment's lower, but you're paying on this for 90 months. Look at how much interest you're paying over those 90 months, right? Uh, you know how Americans are. Americans love their, I can fit it into my monthly budget. I'm going to finance this toothpick. I'm going to finance this salt shaker uh, just because I can fit it into my monthly budget. That's how you stay on the hamster wheel, and that's how you stay broke. Um, and then also beware of the repossession process. According to the FTC, lenders can repo cars as soon as a borrower misses a payment. Usually, though, it takes two to three consecutive missed payments. Once the vehicle is seized, the repo uh, could stay on your credit report for seven years, and that would obviously hurt your credit score, keeping you in that um, high interest rate subprime category um, spiral, if you will. So how do you guys feel about this? Leave a comment down below. I'm seeing people with four-figure car payments. Uh, these used to be mortgages, guys, okay? 90-month car loans, this is insane. These are these are literally small mortgages at this point for a depreciating asset. This is how you stay poor. Uh, it's by financing depreciating assets. Not only is it a double whammy, your car is going down in value, uh, and at the same time, you're paying interest on borrowing that money for a depreciating asset. So uh, there's some cars that make sense. You can obviously get into classic cars and things like that. Those go up. Those do go up in value historically. Uh, but if you're looking at daily drivers, you know, 90 months, you know, thousand dollar a month car payments. You know, who knows what the interest rates are on these things? Six, seven, eight, nine percent if you're subprime. This is crazy, you guys. This is insane. Um, so keep in mind, everything is simply a rate of return. So if your car payment is high and you're watching this video and you do have the cash to pay it off, think about if you could put X amount of dollars into some sort of investment, let's call it stocks, and you're going to average, you know, let's just pretend 7%, right? And your car payment or your car loan is 9 to 10%. Pay off the car loan. You're making a guaranteed tax-free rate of return of whatever the percentage of your loan is. Make sense? Um, so as always, I hope you guys got value out of this video. I just want to shine a light and raise awareness on this. Um, don't 
don't drive yourselves literally to the poor house because you want you know all the bells and whistles of a new car. Um, I personally always pay cash for cars. Uh, if you can finance it, if you're getting something crazy like zero percent from Honda or whoever, um, you know that could be a feasible option because you can invest the difference and make money. Or in this interest rate, you can put. I have a video coming out. Um, should be coming out before this video comes out. There's places where you can make guaranteed 5.1, 5.2% on your money. So if you can finance a car at 0%, you'd be an idiot not to put that money into something making you 5% in this interest rate environment, okay, or make that spread. Um, one last shout out to Whiteboard Finance University. I got four professors in line, a uh, real estate professor. He owns about 400 units um, in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I have a uh, personal finance budgeting professor. I have a stock market professor. And I also have an ETF professor. All these people are content creators uh, and they're awesome. Uh, right now, I'm just working on putting everything together and having content inside the school um, before you join as opposed to just waiting on the live streams with me and also the weekly content that will be coming out from all the professors themselves. So it's going to be freaking awesome. I uh, hope you guys uh, sign up for it. Check out the waiting list down below. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day 90 month car loans are you dumb like i hate to go like i hate to become like dave ramsey where he's like that that's dumb with a capital d u m b dumb like but 90 months guy like i thought 60 was you know okay 72 you know you're kind of an idiot 90 90 90 <laughs>